Okay, so it's Christmas Eve and I have my sister with me and we're both Hello. ill. Uh, this might be a two part video because um, it's quite a long script. I'm on one of three pages at the moment. I'm quite excited about making this video, to be honest. Of course you are, it's you. <laughs> so um, anyway, these are my top five favourite Disney soundtracks and this is this is based on like the entire soundtrack not just the songs not just pieces of music but like mm -hmm. everything together anyway if I could not be more Christmassy I'm gonna be more Christmassy this is the most tacky thing I've ever owned and I love it um if you want to listen to any of the music I'll put little bits over when I'm talking but you probably won't be able to hear it that well because copyright Mm -hmm. And um, so I've put links somewhere. Somewhere there are links. I'm sure you'll find them. I know you're not that dumb. <laughs> so I'm basing this list on how well the track works both within the film and when you're just listening to it by itself. Because some of them, as good as they are in the film, if you try and listen to the soundtrack outside it just... It doesn't mm. hold up. <clears throat> Frozen. Shut up. No, Frozen's not that bad actually. I was talking more like, I think Toy St the Toy Story Toy soundtrack. Story. Like in the film, it works so well with the film, but when you take it outside of the film, it's just it doesn't. You can't listen to it. I, I do all of the um, films that I'm featuring or soundtracks that I'm featuring in this video. I do own the soundtrack, I have CDs. I should probably have gone and got them, shouldn't I? Do you want me to get them? Could you? Can do. Oh, she's back. She's back! What have you bought? No, you don't need them all! It's just the Disney ones. Top five I'm doing, not top 20. <laughs> I think you've got more than 20 here. We put them under the stool. You're under sat on a stool, do you feel privileged? A stool. Privileged? <laughs> Guess what died? You did. No. <laughs> the battery the died. Perfect the battery place. died. So we'll start that again. Okay, so starting from the bottom up, we have number five, which is Alice in Wonderland 1951. Oh Alice. Oh Alice. I love Alice to pieces. Um so this one this one is such a nostalgic track for me. I absolutely grew up loving Alice, didn't I? Yes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so much. Um, the books, the films, you name it, I've probably got it. I mean, this is fantastic to buy, firstly, as the album, like, because they just, all of the music in the film, everything's here, everything. Like, they Literally. don't, they don't miss anything off. And so you just, you really get your money's worth. Um, I mean the music itself, yeah. it's so vibrant, it's so full, it's mm. just, it's phenomenal. When well, you listen to it, you're just listening to the film without well, the visuals yeah, well, and the talking. And the talking. Some of the talking's on this, but it's yeah. such a well put together soundtrack to buy. Just, they don't miss anything off. It's all in order, which really annoys me with some of them, it's not in order, like, <laughs> come on. You, why, why would you not put it in order? It doesn't make sense to me. So the music in Alice in Wonderland runs throughout the entire film, which means that this soundtrack is nearly an hour long, which is brilliant. <laughs> if you want to listen to it for an hour, it's fantastic. I love it. So, like, the, the songs on this, there are songs on this. There if are. You don't, if you've never seen Alice in Wonderland, there are songs in it, would you believe? When it's a Disney film. Kind How could there not be the, songs? <laughs> kind of mixed up in the tracks though, some it's of them. It's not really mixed up. No, yeah, because some of the tracks are like joined together. Oh yeah, and then no. there's like a song in the middle. As you, as you sometimes get with soundtracks, you'll have like a piece of music, song, piece of music. All in one track. All in one track. So if you do want to just listen to the songs, that might be a bit difficult for you. Uh, the music is still, to this day, fantastic. I don't think it sounds dated. I know some people might think it sounds dated, but I don't think it does. I it's think this like sounds how 
film music should sound. It's like listening to the original Doctor Who theme tune. Yeah. It's so original. It's, it's, just, original. it's just, it's how it should sound. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine it having anything else. And within the film as well, it just works. Like, you yeah. can't imagine watching that film without this soundtrack. It's, it's, it's crazy. The and the effects. Um, the reason it's at number five is because it is it's hard to listen to some of it mm -hmm. because if you do want to just listen to like an individual track or if you've got your playlist on shuffle it's some of the tracks don't make sense by themselves yeah. like I feel like this soundtrack is brilliant on a whole but when you break it down some of the tracks don't work by themselves and the, the person who put it together, they did have a really hard job though because it is mm. ongoing music. To mm. find the places where you have to cut it, to put it in the soundtrack, must have been so hard. When you, when you listen to it as a whole, you don't hear the cuts. It just no, no. rolls through. It just, it just carries on through as if you were watching the film. And I props to the person who did this. Props to the person who made this soundtrack because they had a really hard job and all things considered, they did pretty damn well at it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, despite everything, it, ha it had to go on the list. It had to. Like, this is my childhood. This is incredibly mm -hmm. nostalgic. I used to listen to, I used to watch Alice in Wonderland in Norwegian. I saw it in Norwegian yeah, before I saw it in got, English. Should I get the We've video? Got the video. Yeah, we'll leave no. the video for today. And. You know, it just brings back so many memories, and I just love it to pieces. I had to include it. I didn't have a choice. So if you don't like it, well, you probably shouldn't be watching this channel because uh, Alice in Wonderland is quite prominent in my life. That's the understatement of the century. At number four, we have Beauty and the Beast, 1991. Oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. This little. one, this one. Oh. I mean, it has little to no faults, this soundtrack. It is pretty much bang on. Mm -hmm. My only, like, uh, argument against this one is that there's not enough. Like, who bloody cares? I don't want to hear Celine Dion. I don't want to hear the demos. Give me yeah. more tracks from the film, please. You just offended like, everyone that likes Celine Dion. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I just wish they'd included more of the instrumentals from the film because, mm -hmm. like, the bit with the wolves in the film, the yeah. music there is so good. It is. And it, it wasn't in it, and I bought it, and I was so excited when I first listened to it, and I got to the point where it should have been, it wasn't there, and my heart just kind of dropped slightly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, <laughs> this fits so perfectly with the film, I mean, even though they didn't put the, the music on the soundtrack, which is a little bit, <clears throat> <clears throat> it, it just fits, it fits fantastically alongside the film and it deserves awards for it it. Has got Alan, awards. Alan Menken. I'm probably the only person. I don't know if you're. I don't know if you feel this way, but I think. I think the instrumentals on here are slightly better than the songs. I wouldn't compare. Am I alone? Them. Am I alone? Do, do you kind of? Some of the instrumentals actually are better than the songs on this. I know people praise it for its songs, but yeah, they they just. They just needed to include more from the film, less pop songs, and this might have been higher. And less demos. And less demos, because like we don't need two. I I love that I love that they put Death of the Beast in though. That's from the Broadway. Yeah. I do like that. And the broad, but is the Broadway song on <coughs> the um? What is it? If I can't love her, is that? Only no, that's not on. It's not on there. I love that song. Yeah. But like they had so much to work with, and they just didn't put it in here. Um, it, mm. it is it is beautiful, and mm. you know by itself as well. Like each track, it's different from 
Alice in Wonderland because each track works uh, like standalone. You can listen yeah. to any of it by itself and it's fantastic. Yeah. Like it re you know, it really holds its own. Absolutely. And in the film as mm. well, it just it works. It just works. Perfect. And both with the songs and the instrumentals. But like, it just it, they they just work. And I I love hearing like the orchestra type soundtracks. I, they're, they're kind of my favourite. Mm. It makes me that's, want to that's, play it. that's how they should sound. They should sound so full. Yeah. Like the music should be a part of what's going on, not just the backing track. The build up in this soundtrack is fantastic. Yeah. You wait until number two though. Build ups. Haven't even oh, got. Ha not even close. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> Coming in the middle at number three, we have The Hunchback of Notre Dame 1996. And oh my god, mm -hmm. I love this soundtrack. I really do. You do. Oh, oh it's just. It's just perfect, honestly. It is. It's one of those. I mean, it's Alan Menken. I mean, just. Listen, just listen to this moment right here. I mean, I mean, did you hear that? Did you? Oh, the music! Oh, it just gives me chills. I mean, that—that that is how you write an epic soundtrack. It is. This is an epic soundtrack. This is how you do it. This is, in my opinion, Alan mm. Menken at his best. I mean, I know, I know he's a Beauty and the Beast as well, but this is, oh, this is just so full. It's just yeah. so full of life. It's vibrant. Like the only letdown for this particular soundtrack is that god awful song, "A Guy Like You." Now, oh, uh, I like, I like to think. It, it just doesn't fit with the rest of the film at all. It doesn't fit with the rest of the soundtrack. That scene in the film, it no. doesn't, nothing about it works. Shoehorned in. It, it was really shoehorned in. And in my opinion, it sh that scene should have been cut. Mm. I wouldn't have had that scene. I'd have cut it. If it was my film, I'd have cut it anyway. And because the rest of the film, the tone is so different. And that tone needs to be kept throughout the whole yeah. thing. And that scene just loses it. It, it has just, very it just, little meaning later as well in the film. Well, yeah, it, it doesn't come back. And I, I would like to think that the gargoyles are in his head. Yeah. I mean, I know they're not. I know they're not supposed to be in his head, but I would like, like, I'd like to think that they are, because that's sad. It makes it really sad, but sweet. It was kind of sweet anyway. <laughs> of course, he's adorable. I mean. Apart from that one song, the rest of the soundtrack is massive. Like it just doesn't it doesn't stop, it doesn't hold back. It doesn't hold back and that's why I love it so much. And I do think that you know when when Alan Menken was asked to write a song for that particular scene, I I kind of hope that I kind of hope that it happened where he kind of just looked at it and went, You having a laugh. You are having a laugh, aren't you? Because, I mean, that song, it is a joke. Yeah. It is a joke, that one song. And I think he knows that. And I think he knows that the scene's a joke. And I just, I think he kind of just looked at the script and went, ha! So anyway, like, like Beauty and the Beast, we have violins on an epic scale. Yes. Epic scale. They are done to the max. And bells. <laughs> like, he just, he just doesn't hold back. And like, the orchestra, not the orchestra, choir. Yeah. The choir that sings in this. No holding back. Organ. There's organ in this. There's all sorts. There's everything. Everything you can think of has been put beautifully into this soundtrack. And it gives you chills when you listen yes. to it. And I've put I've put this uh, I've put this one above Beauty and the Beast simply because the emotions that I feel listening to this are they're just more, I feel more emotional listening to this than Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast is fantastic, the music is it brilliant. Is. But this one makes me feel more. 
this that's all I can really say. It's just because it has have... more. It just and it yeah drives into you, and you can feel it in your chest and your heart is like, and you kind of oh. Again, again, every second of this soundtrack fits. Even a guy like you, it suits the film, it suits the scene that it's for, to a T. The scene just doesn't fit the rest this of the film. The scene just doesn't fit the rest of the film. And when you it listen to it outside of the film as well, it, just, it only helps you appreciate it even more. Yeah. And I, think, I do think they put the right amount of instrumentals into this one as well. I would like, I would like them to have put more in. But do they do an extended I'm not soundtrack. as disappointed. I think they have got an extended soundtrack, I'm not sure. I'm not as disappointed as I was with Beating the Beast. My second favourite at number two is Treasure Planet from 2002. Oh. James Newton Howard is like the god of soundtracks. I mean, if you haven't seen Treasure Planet, it's worth seeing just just because of his music, really. Yeah. I mean, I do love the film as well, but his music mm -hmm. is just out there. And I mean, he somehow manages to pull, like, even the most dire films out of the mud with his soundtracks. He's perfect. He really is. And, oh, God, I love Treasure Planet so much. It is without fault. I think it is without fault. It's like... It's very orchestral with a bit of a steampunk twist, so yeah, and it works so well. It just works so well. There's guitars, violins, there's and everything. It has how you actually do bass oh, as well. Yeah, I know, and oh, I mean, it's definitely one I can listen to for hours on end. In fact, I mean, I heard the soundtrack before I watched the film, and oh, it's brilliant. Chord progressions as well, fantastic. And just listen. As I was saying, he uses it all the time. Um, I don't know what else he uses, and I, oh, I can't describe how it makes me feel. It just makes me feel. It's just so bloody brilliant. <laughs> I mean, even the there's least. like crappy naughty songs in it, but it still fits with the film's aesthetic. And oh. you can learn to love naughty songs. I mean, yeah, he, he, this is my favourite composer of all time. Mm -hmm. He's, like this is comparing him to John Williams, Danny Elfman, and oh, John Williams, I love it. The guy who did Star I mean, he Wars. never fails to impress me, and this soundtrack proves it. Yeah, it's absolutely enchanting. And if I ever get to work with this man, I will be the happiest person alive. He won't like, work. Honestly. You'll stop working as soon as you see that it's going to happen. Oh, I love it. Just. <laughs> I just love it. I can't. I can't. Oh. Did you hear the guitar as well? And with the violins and oh, I take my hat off to you. you <laughs> Do you not I don't care. Camera. I take my hat off to him. He's just perfect. He's perfect. I've, I've never met more perfect. 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 <clears throat> so in the top spot. The one you've all been waiting for, I'm sure. We have not Frozen, not The Lion King. Mhm. Mm Mary Poppins, 1964. Oh my God. Oh my God. You saw how I reacted to the last soundtrack. This one. This one. Oh. This no one. No words. <laughs> I feel that this particular soundtrack is the most timeless. I'm showing you in the back. This particular <laughs> soundtrack is like the most timeless of yeah. them all. And uh, it just goes, it goes, well. yeah, it, I have got the extended one as well, which helps. And it goes through every single emotion under the sun. Happy, mm. sad, excited, angry, and you finish the film with just such a wonderful feeling. Yeah. And that is largely due to the Sherman Brothers. You know? Legends. It's if just... you're ever up. Ugh, hmm. talk. I mean, for me particularly, the most important tracks on a soundtrack are the 
like the overture, the main title, the beginning and the ending and we've got, on this one we've got overture which is what you're listening to right now so yeah and then to finish it off we've got let's go fly a kite and you couldn't start and end a film more perfectly and it no. is a musical, it, you know, and it works as a musical yeah. as well. Especially. The songs, the instrumentals, they are all, yeah. they're beautiful. Like, for example, Mr. Banks is Discharged. Haunting, that is. Haunting. You've got Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Mm. That makes you want to get up and dance. Stepping yeah. time makes you want to get up and dance. And then suddenly... When you were And then you have like, a man has dreams. And it's just haunting. And you just sit there like... <laughs> when you were little and you'd always... We don't need, to, we don't to, need to go into this. We don't need to go into that. Not now. But Mary Poppins. And the soundtrack is practically perfect in every way. <gasps> no! Sorry about that. People came in. People came home. Yeah. So we had to stop for a month. But we're back! <laughs> literally 32 days. Literally, literally a month. Um, the final thing that I'm going to say about Mary Poppins is just that the music works with the picture. Like it doesn't just sit behind it. Like, in, you know, like a lot of films have a backing track, which yeah. is the soundtrack. This is not. This is not a backing track in the slightest it is as memorable as the film if not a little bit more which is exactly what films should do yeah this is exactly what a sham soundtrack should be and mary poppins mary poppins does it the best really i think mm. I t this this one has a certain innocence about it really yeah like it it takes itself seriously but it's still quite playful and well much like the main character really yeah this is the embodiment of Mary Poppins. That's all that's all I've got to say about the soundtracks. So there you have it. Um that's my top five favourite Disney soundtracks with a little help from my darling younger sister, whose name I will hopefully have bleeped out whenever I said it. Yeah. Cause you cannot know who she is. No. Um this is just based on what I've heard. I will admit that there are some films that I haven't listen to the soundtrack for yet. Some I haven't the haven't seen The Great Mouse Detective. That's one I haven't seen. I want to see that. I do want to see that. I haven't actually seen Atlantis. Don't shoot me, I haven't seen Atlantis. Um, which is another one I quite like to see. And it's another James Newton Howard one, so I'm sure. Sure. I am sure <laughs> that it will be phenomenal. Fantastic. I'm interested to hear what your favourite full soundtrack is because so many people just do just the songs. I hope he has an amazing yeah. Christmas and New Year. Since I was going um, to post whatever's this, happened I was going to post. I was going to post this like Christmas Eve or something. But guess what? It's the fifteenth of January. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'll see you when I next see you, and I might might bring might bring her back, maybe <laughs> if she wants to. I don't know if she really liked doing this. Do you? I don't mind it. I'm just saying. Um, I'll see you when I next see you. Bye. You gonna say bye? Bye.